Hello YouTube, it is Damien, it is Sunderland, it is Bright Lights. It's episode 44 of Bright Lights, and here we are with a double header today in the Twine and Weird Derby with Newcastle and then the FA Cup fifth round against Millwall. For those that haven't watched last episode, it was a pretty embarrassing episode for myself. Uh, it wasn't embarrassing in the FA Cup, you know, we grinded out a 2 0 win against Stoke in extra time in a game that we batted Stoke in but only took to the 150th minute to. Score before a 120th minute sealer, both from Marquez. We then lost, get ready for it, 9 0 to Liverpool at Anfield. 9. The only reason I tolerated that a little bit is because I'm a Liverpool supporter, so I didn't mind. Um, we played a slightly weakened side because I was like, we needed to rotate in numbers. I think the big loss was Jay De Silva um, at left back. It mean that we had to play Oviedo, and yeah, Oviedo's not good enough. So we did make a signing on deadline day, and his name is Jon Wallace. Now, Wallace does is Scottish, and he's 18. We probably slightly overpaid for him because I just wanted him a left back that could half do a job. 3.6 mil was his release fee. Look, Wallace has Premier League potential, which is good. He's actually really good physically, um, and he's better than Oviedo. So when called upon, we will use him. We did use him against Man United, um, and we did use him against Leeds. Against Man United, we'll get into it, but, you know, Wallace is what he is. Um, against Man United, we did lose 2-0, um, which wasn't the game after. We played for West Ham on stream. We won 3-2. We, we lost 2-0 to Man United in a game that we, you know, we got batted in. Uh, it's Man United at Old Trafford on Football Manager. It happens. We then played Leeds, and we batted Leeds themselves. Senseless. I mean, as you can see, Wallace played in that game, got a 6.8. He also played in Man United game. He came with a slight knock, but I didn't want to play OV8 after what I just saw against Liverpool. Um, Fiogo, um, Diogo, I spoke to after the Liverpool game and told him that he had a shocker against Liverpool. He needs to improve unless Smithy's going to get his spot back. And he kind of kicked up a fuss straight away, and he said, that's not unfair. I'm a new signing here, and I thought I kept quite well. Uh, I then didn't want to start an argument with him. We, Players of old, you know, like Sidwell and that, I would have been like, no, I'm boss, you know. But I let him go. He got a 7.0 against um, Leeds, but he actually got a 7.2 against Man United. Um, he pulled off some big one-on-one -on -one saves, you know, in that game. Um, so, credit where credit's due. Diogo responded to the team talk, and he's now picked up a couple of 7.0s, and he will start against Newcastle. Smithies is definitely going to be our first choice keeper for the FA Cup. Um, for the foreseeable future, because I think Smithies gives us a little bit of option. But we are lacking maybe a little bit of leadership in and around the first team. There is one thing to talk about. We have a transfer offer and a weird time to get one. Wesley Ho um, Wesley Hoyt, um, heard it there, um, our centre-back, and has actually been okay so far this year, apart from the Liverpool game. You know, there was a few games earlier on that he was hopeless in, but in the new system, he's been quite good. Has got a transfer offer. Um, if we go to the transfer, offer, it's a biggish offer from Sandong. It's 17 mil for a guy that we paid uh, 12 and a half. I don't want to pay that much. I'm literally, he's interested in him. I literally just want to tell him that I want 30 mil, right? And if they negotiate with 30 mil, I actually want 35 now. Um, because I feel like this guy, um, Jonathan Sotora and Daniel, who now has his work permit, if you haven't seen last episode, um, and was playing quite well, was it for the 9 mil loss against Liverpool? I kind of left him high and dry. You know, when I played Oviedo on one side, played Linus on the other side, who's out of form, wasn't great. I'm just going to negotiate 30 mil. We'll see what they respond to. But this makes this um, Newcastle deal um, quite a big game, right? Um, I'm hoping that we'll be okay. And, you know, a big win here. As it stands, we currently are in sick on a positive goal difference of three. You know, after the Newcastle game, we were down... Um, after the Liverpool game, we went down to two. We were down to zero, I believe, in the Man United game. I oh, know we're on one with the Man United game um, after the Man United game. So the goal is to win games at the moment and get ourselves back to that past 11 goal difference in and around Chelsea as quickly as possible. As you can see, a lot of teams have played their 23 games. We're actually three points clear of Spurs and currently sitting inside the top seven. Um, a win here today could kind of not cement ourselves, but we'll kind of just say to you know everybody that we're going to finish top half this season, but we're looking at better. So hopefully we do beat Newcastle here today. Um, Liverpool won again, and, you know, it's okay. Um, Alex was going to start this game, but he's now picked up a knock. So Godin's now going to start. If it will let me select Godin. Um, it won't let me select Godin. That's fine. We've got to put Sergi Sampry there, and we will select Godin. Um, um, Godin? Thank you. Um, as you can see, everyone else has been the same. Um, my assistant's trying to tell me that Joe Silva's better than Taram, but we know Taram's form is really good here. We're going to play Taram in the Newcastle game, and then Joe Silva in the uh, Millwall game. And if Silva plays well against Millwall, he will start against Chelsea. Um, with that in mind, um, I think Dossek's our best centre defensive midfielder. Um, we are going to play Miguel in this game here because I actually rate the Millwall game as slightly more important. Um, I think there's a big chance that we can make the semi-final at a minimum in the FA Cup this year with a kind draw. So I'm going to do that. The Silva's back from injury. From in 
injury. Um, I dropped Hoyet for Sorata over the last two games. Sorata didn't have the best against Man United, you know, but bounced back well against Leeds. Um, but I am going to play Hoza and Daniel in here with Burgess. Figo, um, Diogo in goals, Hala, Tarama, Marcos have a decent partnership, and Luzano, who's been playing sensationally ever since we moved to this system. Um, I'm hoping for a, a, just a positive performance here. I would love to go out there, win two, three nil, get some goal difference back, and continue on. Um, it does mean that the Chelsea game is super important. I'm not going to live comment. I'm uh, thinking that maybe the Spurs game could be slightly more important slightly later down the year. And I also think it would be quite a miss of me for the people that are Sunderland supporters and not seeing the time when we are Derby at some point in this season. Um, and plus, this is still an important game in terms of cementing ourselves in the top half. I'm going to tell them that I want you to pick up where you left off last time against Leeds, and I really want you guys to go out there and absolutely make the difference. Um, they look quite happy. I'm going to set the opposition instructions, and there we are. It's a big day. We're a tremendous occasion. Obviously, I'd rather have Alex available because he would have started, allowing us to rotate. Got him, but it won't happen. Um, I think if we compare the two sides, I'm going to consider us outsiders. I'm actually going to put the pressure on the boys to just show us that you know, we're not outsiders, boss. We are really the real deal. Um, I'm still a little bit apprehensive playing Hoda again after the 9 0 loss. Um, but in saying that, though, and maybe it's the system against the biggest side, we then got battered by uh, Man United. I just personally think that just, they're just so much better than us. But when we do grow into our potential, I think we'll be okay. It is Newcastle bringing the ball first and Poole with a great strike across the keeper. And there's nothing Diogo can do about that. He, If he starts coming in a poor run of form, I am going to drop him for Smithies. And I think Smithies' leadership is a big part of the way we play. And maybe bleed Diogo in sporadically throughout that. I didn't mean to skip that. I think that was just me and just... You know, a pretty annoying mood. It was a great goal. Um, you know, I'm going to tell us to concentrate. We have not started well at all, but here comes a highlight, hopefully, for us. Um, and then use Smithies as a player that we can, um, you know, play first to us and really bleed in um, the Yorgo in games we're meant to win, you know, against the bottom half sort of sides and stuff like that. So the ball goes in back post and Marcos heads over the bar. We really need to get back into this game. Um, this has to be a must-win game for us as well. Um, you know, I, I just think the league's important as much as the FA Cup is, but the FA Cup takes a little bit of precedence at the moment um, until we get knocked out. And once we get knocked out, full guns blazing in the league. As things stand, though, we are currently one nil down and Podence with the ball back in, but Tarum heads away and Luizano now. And there should be an option down the line with Marquez. He does look for Marquez. It wasn't a great ball. They headed towards Marquez's ball, but we will win it back with the silver. And now Marquez picks it up with Tarum in the middle. Instead, Marquez goes himself, and it's a great strike from Marquez. His 14th goal of the season. Yes, he started so slow. Yes, he's missed four from four penalties, but he scored 14 goals for us, which is crazy for a side in the middle of the table. Second season in, you know, Datasov, you've got to remember, only scored six last year. There may be four, it was a couple of handful of twos in games and not really got going. You know, um, for Fana is also on loan. He actually scored a double uh, for, um, not, uh, for Villarreal against Valencia. Um, and, you know, he scored in a 2 new win. He scored both an 8.8. The Wonder Kid in the Fafana is growing quite well. All our strikers are Wonder Kids, except for Daniel Wood, who I think could grow into the best one because of his stats and his finishing. Anyway, the ball back to Miguel. Anyway, finds Lozano. Finds Godin. Out to the Silver, who's back from injury. The Silver now with the ball running down the line. We'll whip it there. Hala goes down like a, a ton of bricks. It never was a penalty. Marquez is going to take it. If he misses five from five, that's the last draw. Marquez will never take a penalty for the rest of his career at New Sunderland. Is that been penalty shootout? Marquez there. He. Finally buries it, fifth time the charm. His fifth penalty for the year, and he finally scores. Rodrigo Marquez makes it 2-0 from the spot, and we've gone from 1-0 down to 2-1 up just like that. Marquez sending the keeper the right way, but he could never get there as it went bottom bins, and there we go. We now move the 2-1 um, We now move the 2-1 up. Looks like a bruised knee for um, the seal, which is not good. Hallow goes back post, though. Daniel headed off the line, only as far as Godin heads it back at the keeper, um, who is M. Vogol. I can never pronounce it, but he does grow into a decent keeper if by memory. As you can see, he's quite not bad. He's very well-rounded um, for the Premier League. Anyway, we're going to go into a team talk here. I'm going to tell him that I'm happy with the performance. Keep it up. I'm trying to keep morale as high as possible after that 9-0 loss because we dropped a fair bit of morale as well as the goal difference. Um, I honestly think that there's something special with this squad of players. Um, I don't think it's special in terms of you know winning the league or something, but I think we're a couple away, a few years away from that. You know, you get Joe De Silva growing into his wonder kid potential. You get Fofana growing into his wonder kid potential. He can change the game off the bench. Marquez grows and adapts to the league. Haller grows and adapts to the league. We actually get um, Alexander work permit to play in the middle and we'll be okay. Anyway, De Silva now, who will be rested for the FA Cup game. We're going to play Wallace. Finds Miguel with the throw in. Miguel switch of play finds Burgess. Burgess, who will probably also get rested for Linus as well. Finds Godin. Great turn from Godin. Godin now getting down the sideline. Whips that one in, but it's 
beating everybody in full to Marquez. Marquez that gets absolutely blitzed by a tackle by Rog, who used to go into a very good play. I reckon he used him like FM 13 or 14. But Rog goes into a brick wall of Miguel. Miguel should be able to um, to consolidate possession and play it back to the silver, which he does. Finds Luizano in the hole, who scored one of the goals of the year um, a couple of, uh, on the live stream. Finds Luizano from distance deflected, but straight at Miguel. Um, Luizano, yet again, looking decent, but not the greatest. Hello though, with the chance to maybe whip it in back post, he does. Looks for Daniel, and that's his first goal for Sunderland. I'm glad it's coming to LiveCon. We've been expecting so much of this lad, and Daniel scores his first goal for the club. We are up 3-1 here. Hello there at the puts it back post. Daniel standing there, a towering header, and that is 3-1 there. Um, I really I expect big things of Daniel. We are going to get Joe Silver on for um, to run. And what we might do here is we're going to get Watmore in for Haller. Haller's had a good game, but maybe get Watmore in there just to make sure that Haller can play in the next game as well. Um, I really see how time ticks away from us here. Um, time's still ticking away here. 81st, 82nd minute. There we are. Into the 84th minute. We are going to take Marcus off. He's now picked up a little knock. And we are going to just bring Wood as a poacher for the last few minutes. Wood's been growing. His potential went down because his determination went down. I think that's because in the mentoring group, it's to run that's mentoring him. There's a few good um, player... Player things that I wouldn't mind him picking him up for run, but the thing goes down. Anyway, great save from Diogo, but it's fallen back to Dominic Calvin Lewin, and all of a sudden, squeaky bum time. I'm actually not happy with that because of the goal difference as well. Um, but there was a great save in here from Diogo. Um, Gul gets headed down. That's a great save from Diogo. It actually comes back off him, and Diogo gets fingertips on it again, but it does fall there. Hopefully, we can just concentrate please and just see this one out we do need the three points here it should be game over when he throws it in Otamendi um, and it is and we do win 3-2 thankfully a bit of an interesting time with your derby a game they're always in control of but um, you know nonetheless it wasn't too bad um, in the end Rodriguez getting man of the match picking up a slight knock hopefully it's nothing too serious and he should be okay you played very well lads very good win it's another goal back for the goal difference if we can keep on winning Goal difference to come back into it for us. Um, but we'll see how we go. Anyway, we'll get to the Millwall game in just a second. The Silver's out for one to two days. So is the same with Marquez. Um, we're going to send the assistant to that. You know, obviously, I'm pretty happy with how everything goes. And Rodrigo getting man of the match there. And we'll see how we go against Millwall in the FA Cup in just a second. Welcome back, YouTube. Episode 44, part two. It's Millwall away at the Den. And it's Sunderland. I've gone with a slightly rotated side because I know we have Man Chelsea and Manchester City coming up the next two games that we play. Um, Smithies is in goal, like I said. Linus is going to play at right back. I feel like Linus is good enough to play against, um, you know, uh, weakened opposition, championship opposition. Kim Ken Jin has just come back from South Korea winning the Asian Cup. So I decided he's match fit. I'm going to get him in there. Came alongside Daniel, gave him a start. Um, the 20-year-old is decent in the air. He's very good physically, makes great decisions, great concentration, and he's very good as a covering defender. So I expect that, um, the way Mill will play to be quite directed in behind. And us on a counted system, if we could get a covering defender in Kim Kane Jin picking up the ball around the back and then being able to distribute out, I'm pretty happy with that. I really think that if we taught him how to play a ball playing defender, he could definitely become it because of his decision making and his concentration. And if we get the vision and the passing up, he could be a ball playing defender in the future, which is what I prefer. But as a defender defender, he's not too bad. If you compare him to like Van Dyke, who isn't at the club at the moment, but we should still be able to uh, have a look. There we are. They're very, very similar with uh, Van Dyke being slightly quick with speed, but aerially Kim Ken Jin's better. And I would prefer to have a little bit more aerial ability here at the club than speed in my centre back. So hence why that um, Van Dyke's currently on at loan at Frontina, where he's growing. He's played five times at a 6.88, solid. Um, I think he's a little bit out of his depth starting in the Serie A, but in saying that, though, it's good for the growth of Herman van Dijk. Um, anyway, we'll go back to the squad, though, quickly before we get into it. Um, Daniel's going to start on the left. He's either-footed, so it doesn't bother me. Wallace, the new sign, is going to start at fullback. Dossett, the new centre-defensive midfielder, who is a ball-winning ball -winning midfielder, the 18 or the worth 11 mil. Um, you know, he is our best ball playing defender. He, every time he's played, he's a 7.16. Um, in the cup, he had a 6.7. Hasn't had his best time in the FA Cup so far. Um, Sergi Sampri is going to play as a Mazala. Now, this may sound a bit weird, but if you put him a bit forward, he's actually not too bad as a Mazala. You know, he's got good passing. He's got good first touch. He's got very good mentals to play as a Mazala, but he's probably not the best player as a Mazala. We need to give him game time so he doesn't get too upset. Um, and this might be a good game to play him. You know, Rest got in, West Miguel. Um, you know, I've actually got... Um, Alex that's still injured. McCarthy could have came in, but I've left him out. Um, with that in mind, I was tempted to play McCarthy, but I've got Luizana playing center attacking mid because I want him to link up with Marquez. Silver, like I said, was going to start the one the kid who's been growing. Um, according to my um, 
really key is um, key uh, youth development officer Lu- Luis Morales. He's apparently our second best striker, and the one the kid's got a lot of potential. And I feel like that he's definitely growing into quite a player. He's got 15 dribbling. If that gets him into 16, he's going to look much better. 16 technique. He's got good flair, okay determination, uh, but really good physicals. And I hope he does grow into a player. Um, anyhow, as things stand though, that's going to be the team. What more on, on the other side, and that's okay. What I am going to do is I'm quickly going to um, just edit out a little bit. I'm going to go close close the door. I can hear my sister maybe doing some dishes in the background. I don't want to be picked up on the mic. So we'll be right back in just a second with the Millwall and Sunderland game. Doors closed. Let's get into it. It is Sunderland, Millwall at the Den. Um, because of uh, the competition, if we do remember, um, there is no extra time of penalties. It is going to go... Um, there's no extra time penalties. There's no um, replay because of the World Cup being in 2022. So there's going to be extra time and penalties if it does get there. Um, a former man we're playing against in Charlie. How's Charlie's season gone since we sold him on for uh, 150k at Millwall? He's actually played quite well at Millwall, scoring goals. He's actually having a very good year this year in the championship. Um, you know, going to play 4 4 2. I'm hoping that we should be able to press them out of the game. Um, there's a lot of lads in here that haven't been getting first team football that should be getting first team football, but hopefully it'll be okay. Smithies and Linus can lead the line for us in terms of leadership in the field. Daniel's been in great form, keeping him in there. I'm just so glad he's here that I'm just going to play him in as many games as possible. Sergi Sampri's playing in there. Dossett, the youngster. What more? Yeah, and you know, it's Duncan. You know what you're going to get with Duncan. I picked the team that I feel was best is giving us a cheese. Um, um, I'm talking about the Inns, obviously, and rather than Diogo, you know, Smithies has been our first team keeper for the past few years, so it shouldn't make no surprise that he's not there. Um, you know, Silver's 100% fit, and if Silver plays well, he starts against Chelsea, you know, and I'm going to just treat Tarum and Silver as whoever's the best form players. Um, Tarum's in great form playing as a striker, but I honestly believe that uh, Silver, when given the opportunity, is in good form as well. And he did have a very good game not too long ago. He scored a brace in, um, including a 90th minute winner, if I'm not mistaken, in a stream. I think it was the free two win against West Ham. Um, anyhow, we are going to keep going here as Brown gets forward, finds Freeman. It's the first time Mill will have come forward. They get the ball to Brown. Brown chips it to Morrow on the volley. Why, God, what a goal. Nicolo Moro's put Millwall one new up with probably the best goal of the FA Cup this season. It's chipped to him on the edge of the box, and he goes, not a problem, I'm following this one there with a flying volley, and Smivies can't do anything about it. What a volley that is from Nicolo Moro, and Smivies couldn't readjust to it in time. But what a strike, but their first chance on target, it's an absolute wonder strike, and we're one new down. I do reckon that we will get into the game, though. If we can get creative, get a goal back, I'd believe that we're going to come out on top. And I you know, believe there's going to be chances for us as well. Um, time ticking away though here at the moment. Not much happening too much at the moment, but hopefully we'll be okay. Still time ticking away here though. 45 minutes played. Um, and it is going to be half time. We are going to be one nil down, which is not what we want. Um, we're going to get into the team talk though, and we're going to get very aggressive with the lads and just be like, come on boys, we've got to be better than this. This is a competition that we really want to win. Can we go out there and win it please? You know, there's a competition we want to go well in. You know, even if, if we draw City, we draw um, Chelsea, we draw one of the big boys, draw Arsenal, so be it, right? Um, but if we can maybe eke away, get another round in with drawing one of the lesser sides that were in the competition, we'll be all right. I'm actually going to move to a bit more attacking because I feel like we're all over them, and hopefully we'll be okay. None of the one in the back four is having a very decent day, or the back five. No one really having a decent day at all. Sergi Sampri picking up a booking. I am going to make our first change, and Godin's going to come in for Sergi Sampri before he gets sent off. And we're going to bring Haller on for Watmore. He's a little bit more of a forward-thinking player that can really create something for us, hopefully. Um, time ticking away here as things stand, and not really a goal. I'm worried about Luizano and his fitness. I didn't expect it to deteriorate so quickly. Anyway, Marquez on the ball finds Luizano. It's a good ball over the top to Silvio. And Joe Silvio with a chance, but how has he put it over the bar? Would prefer to see the keeper make a save. Instead, it's gone high and wide, and not at all handsome. And we are still 1-0 down. We are going to make one more change. It's Luis is going to come off. I'm actually going to move him into here. And we're going to bring Daniel Wood on as a poacher. And we're going to move to that, I reckon, there. We're actually going to move the Mazala to the other side. And Doneski is the ball winning midfield to the other side. And we're going to play Haller pretty much by himself. And there we go. Can we find something here? We've gone the three strikers up top. Can we find ourselves a goal? Anyway, Moro now with a ball there, who scored that one, the goal. Leonard, but should be picked up by Linus, it is, and it's headed towards Halla. We should have numbers forward here to hit him on the break. We do. Halla now chips it in towards Silva. Silva should get there. He's 1v1 with the keeper. Silva, what a save from Roberts. He's kept this at 1-0. Wallace now on the overlap. Gets absolutely crunched with an imperfect tackle, as the game says. And we're still 1-0 down. A great save there from Roberts in goals. 
and you just feel like it's not our day. It's another highlight, though. Linus throws it in. Wood holds it up nicely, but Morrow does pick it up, and they go long down the line. Can we win it in the air? We do with Kim John, who will find their way to Godin. Godin now with the ball. Still with Godin. Finds it way to Linus. We've got many, many, many numbers in the box, but Linus doesn't whip it. That's his one problem with me, is he gets into positions to cross, and he doesn't. Kim Jan gets with the ball. Haller now coming inside. Still with Haller. Hits it, and wide. Still 1-0 down. I just feel like the goal's coming if we leave it. But I'm going to tell them to push forward and hopefully they'll find a way. You know, there's still a time ticking away here. Can we find another late goal? We've scored many late goals this season. Doesn't look like it's coming. There's still a minute to go, but it's up the wrong end. Doreski now flips it out to the other side to Wallace. Wallace flicking it on there. We'll find Marquez. Marquez now. Can he put a ball into the channel? He does. It finds Silva. Silva! And it's an equaliser in the 93rd minute. Thank God. We were being FM'd a little bit. Joe Silva's missed a couple of chances, scores his third, and in the 93rd minute of added time, well, in the 94th minute, I should say, of the 94 minutes, we are going to be 1-1 here. Mark was a good ball into the channel, fine Silva, throwing the kitchen sink, and we do find it, and it is 1-1. It's a bit cruel on Millwall, but it is going to go to extra time here. I'm going to get quite upset with the lads in the dressing room and be like, what is that, what we just witnessed? I'm far from pleased. There's a lot of lads that aren't 100% fit, but hopefully we've got a couple of uh, fresh men in Hala and Wood that can provide you know, some... Um, some cause of concern for this Millwood defence as Silva in the end tried to volley but it didn't get there and it will be an early corner which Haller will take the number seven. Um, pretty worried that this has gone the extra time, I'm not going to lie, but as things stand though, it's okay. And apparently it's a penalty, Kamara's been penalised for a push and Rodrigo Mar Marquez has scored one out of his last five penalties. It was the last penalty that you saw last episode. Can he score here today? Marquez versus Roberts. He sends Roberts down the one way as he goes down the middle. We're now 2-1 up. I'm actually going to leave it as we are. I feel like trying to go more defensive with three strikers out there, we're very limited to what we can do. He's just going to ask for um, trouble. So if we can stay on the attacking system, we know we've dominated this game. We can probably find ourselves another goal or two. Freeman, though, with the ball there. We'll play in the Ujara. Great talents. Wallace now will pick it up, and Wallace will clear long, and it will find Marquez. Marquez now has numbers there. He finds Silva. Silva there. Silva a chance to really kill off the game. He hits the post. Silva's missed three big one-on-ones, but has scored the all-important equaliser, so I'm not going to get too upset at him. But he has squandered a lot of chances, but created a lot. We've had 27 shots in this game. There's no way Millwall should have been you know, um, there's no way Millwall should have been still in the game at the 90th minute, leading us to score an extra, you know, an added time equaliser. As things stand, though, we're going to get into the second half here. I'm just going to tell the lads just to concentrate, go out there, play your natural game, going to move off attacking, we're going to move it to a little bit more cautious, still playing off the break, though, but this is still a very counter-attacking system. As Ojari there whips it in back post, Quinn might get there, and like in the first half of extra time, is there going to be a highlight in the straightaway again? Quinn now with a chance. Can he whip it in there? He falls to Meredith. Meredith there, it won't be mercifully. And there we are. I'm just going to hope that we can hang on here. There's a lot of not fresh legs out there at the moment, but hopefully we can do it. I would love another goal, but Leonard with a chance to whip it in though. It's headed away from Godin, but only if it is El Jar. El Jar, the former Liverpool name. Freeman hits it, and it is 2 2 just like that. We're going to move to a little bit more attacking yet again. And I tell you what, this game has a whole month to go into penalties, and it's been so much squeaky bum time. I don't know what to do. Millwall here have given us a big run for our money. Leonard with the throw in there finds Quinn. It's headed away, but El Jar. El Jara. With the ball there, finds Freeman. Freeman with a great finish. Smithies can't get there. Smithies has said some important penalties of late. I'm going to tell us to push forward yet again. Can we find maybe a goal? It's a corner. Haller whips it back post. It gets up. Daniel, who wasn't in the box for whatever reason, can he clear? Can he whip it in? Falls back to Daniel. Daniel to Godin. Godin down this left-hand side. Godin back to Daniel. Is there going to be a chance in the last seconds? Godin now. Comes inside. Godin from distance. Oh, he's hit the bar. Well, that close to going through the next one finds its way to Halla. Halla, can he whip a ball in? Halla, can he get across? He does. It's a corner. Can we take the corner, referee? Is it going to be a penalties? He's going to let us take the corner. Can we score from it? Daniel's not back post yet again. It is Kim Jen, Jin. Can Kim Ken Jin do that? Anyway, Halla with the ball. Back post. Kim Jin, can he get up? He doesn't. Falls to Daniel. It doesn't. And it's penalties. And we've gone to a penalty shootout here. All right. Silva has to take the first one. Daniel Wood's going to take the second one. Hunter's going to take the third one. Rodriguez is going to take the fourth one. Lyon's going to take the fifth one. And after that, we don't have our best penalty takers on the pitch, unfortunately. Um, just due to how 
you know, we've rested sides and everything. Anyway, Silver, we're going to slow it down. We're going to go back to just, there we are. Can Silver score the first one? Silver, he blasts it into the top left-hand corner, sends the keeper the wrong way too, and Silver's happy with that one. Oh, bitter. Here we go. Can Smivies make a save? The last one win the penalty shoot, Smivies saved twice. Obita versus Smivies. Smivies goes the right way, but a great penalty from Obita, and it is 1-1. The nerves are kicking in here. Wood, the youngster, he's got very good composure, very good finishing. Can he put it in away in the penalty? Just put it on target, my send. Wood there, under the keeper and in. Put it enough in the bottom corner that the keeper couldn't get there, and it is 2-1. Anyway, Leonard now with a chance. Still with Leonard. Of course, he hasn't taken it yet. Can Smivies make a save here? Leonard versus Smivies. Smivies stays down the middle and reads him, and it's a big save from Smivies. Now it is all down to Haller, the wonder kid. Can he score? I would love to see Haller score right now and really just narrow in this uh, penalty advantage that we got. Haller, the keeper goes the right way, but Haller's put in the top bins. You can't save them, and Haller makes it 3 1 now. Are we going to get out of jail and win in penalties? Quinna now with a chance to make it. 3-2, or can Smivies pull off another big save? Smivies goes the right way, but he can't get there, and Quino with a great penalty. Marquez, now look, he's missed four, he missed four from five, but he scored his last two. So he's, out of his last two, he scored two. Can he score here? Our star man, the penalty man, can Marquez score? Marquez there, the keeper stays middle, he's missed another one. So on his last 77 penalties, he's missed five. Brown now steps up, with a chance to make it level for Millwall. Brown now, still with Brown. Can Smivy save? Brown steps up. Smivy does save! How many times has Smivy got to save us? He has been an absolute monster in this save, Smivies. And he saves us yet again. And now with a chance to win, it is Linus, the club captain. Can Linus step up and win it for Sunderland and send us through to the fifth round of the FA Cup? Sorry, the sixth round of the FA Cup. Linus with the penalty shootout. We've got to do what we always do. Get out of our chair. Pray that it goes in. Sit forward and pray and watch as the collective Sunderland side hold their breath with me. Linus to send us free. Thank God. We've done our best to bottle drop it. We've been slightly FM that we were even in it. Credit to women making our lives difficult. But we are through on penalties. 4-2 in penalties, 2-2 um, after full time. It was a bit of a let-off today, and they have agreed, thankfully. But we've got a way of resting a lot of lads, which is good for us. Birmingham winning 4-3 on extra time against Doncaster. Brighton getting 4 against Bristol. Uh, we obviously got through. Wolves got through. West Ham got through. We'll see you in a second, right, um, for the FA Cup 6th round draw. But thankfully, we are through, and we are through against Millwall, who are quite plucky. We got slightly FM'd. But there we are, Nicola Moore scoring one of the best goals in the FA Cup, it's got to be said. But we'll see you for the draw in just a second. Sixth round draw, FA Cup, can we avoid one of the big sides? Can we get Birmingham, can we get Brighton, can we get Wolves or West Ham? Or will it be Man City, Arsenal or Spurs? Obviously, get through the sixth round is then the semi-final. And yes, Damon will be in the suit because it'll be the first time we're at Wembley in the save. Automatic draw, first out of the hat is... Brighton, Sunderland, please. Spurs, it's at least one of the big sides gone. West Ham, Sunderland? Wolves, no, we're going to get one of them. Is that Birmingham? Man City. Oh, we do get Birmingham. We've plucked it out of our bums. We get Birmingham, the only championship side left. We have got a one to tie in the sixth round. I honestly thought it was going to be Arsenal or City. But we have got Birmingham, the championship side. Now, we shouldn't scoff at that. We nearly threw it away against Millwall. We won on penalties, Damien. But, on paper, we should be in the semi-final against either West Ham, Wolves, Spurs, Arsenal, or City. And, you know, half of those sides, we can beat. And then anything can happen in the cup final. Anyhow, that will be next episode along with another game. We get him on the 12th of March, so next month. In terms of next month, is there a big game that falls with it? Uh, not really. Uh, the Tottenham game is probably... Oh, man, look how next those big three fixtures are. These ones are huge for us. Um, there isn't. I feel like we're going to just come back for the Birmingham game, and it's just going to be an episode by itself, and we're just going to go on this FA Cup journey. 
Anyhow, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that is going to be the episode, a crazy episode, where we beat Newcastle in a thrilling game that we're always in control of, and then did our best to bottle drop it in the fifth round of the FA Cup, but for the first time of the Sabre, through to the sixth round, for the first time, we're getting lucky with the FA Cup draw, and I tell you what, when we beat you, when we see you next time against Birmingham, we should be beating him and making the semi-final of the FA Cup. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching the stream. As always, links in the description, the, stream, the YouTube episode. Links in the description below to come watch us live on stream and on Twitter, of course. Thank you once again. Enjoy the rest of your day and night from Damien Sunderland, Bright Lights. That's the end of episode 44. And we'll see you for episode 45 in the near future.